Welcome to the Crow Man Show, rocking every day. Um, my name's Alex Gold, and this is Crow Man A. You guys want to see my chicken instead of my crow? <laughs> I say catching a chicken was a lot easier than catching a crow. Catching a chicken? It was. You know, it was a lot easier when they can't fly. I agree. Chatelet. Salute. I like the crispiness of this. It's good. Oh. So, what's new with you, bro? Me. Um, my dad had a stroke, my dog died, and now my dad's coming home from the hospital. They're gonna hate you for that. What? For all that, for the bad stuff happening? Yeah, they're not gonna like that at all. I remember when I said that my, my grandpa was dying of cancer and he's gonna be dead by the end of this year. They were like, fuck your grandpa. But then I found, and then, and then after they said that, after I saw that comment, found out that he has cancer, but he's not gonna die at the end of the year. He's gonna die of old age long before this cancer kills him. The cancer is in very, very early stages, and it could take decades to actually kill somebody. So pretty cool. Well, my dad has my dad's stroke was a close call, and he's he's just his old self, you know. He nice, happy guy, always quick with a joke. That's right. All I do is smoke. Yeah. Um. Just, you know, it was kind of a bad stroke where he lost some memory, and, um... How much memory? Well, he knows who he is, but, like, you, you can't just walk up to him and be like, what do you remember? Because, you know, the, he had, his stroke, well, he had a stroke, he, he won't tell you what he remembers, he, he just doesn't remember. That sucks. Like, but, Why, of course, he's not going to tell you, well, this is what I don't remember. That wouldn't make any sense. <laughs> but, like, if you bring up old memories, like, I brought up, like, really old memories that you used to bring up to me when I was growing up. But, he, like, he remembers growing up. He remembers his teenage years. He remembers a lot of people in his life. But he doesn't remember probably... I, I remember reminding him of certain things. Like, I reminded him of 9-11. And he, he remembers that day, but he... Interesting. You know, is, is, does he know who did it? I, I didn't go that far. Okay. It. Um, but he had work injuries around that time, but he just remembered those work injuries. And, you know, I uh, tried to ask him questions in chronological order, you know? Mm -hmm. Sucks because I just watched all the Marvel movies with him, like in the theaters, and now he doesn't remember those. Oh, I guess you're going to have to take him again. Take him again. Take him to see the movies, yeah. yeah. Remind him. Well, it's just Air, Ragnarok, and all those oh. things. Oh. Well, I'm sure you can find a movie theater where they got them airing again. They do that. Oh, baby. You want love, don't you? Want me a pack I'm gonna drag it up. Mm. Yeah. Oh, damn, yeah, I'm sorry to hear all that, bro. So, you know what's coming up? Uh, the... Weekend. Uh, Amber's doing another march against Marxism. Oh, that's gonna be a huge success. But, um... The date keeps changing. I don't know if there's a reason behind that, but it's making scheduling for this a little difficult. Because, I mean, it's supposed to happen... Well, I think right now it's pushed back to September. I don't know, it's really, really crazy. I, I have no idea why it, I would know if anyone else knows, maybe Amber knows, but it, I, it, I don't like that it, the, the date keeps changing. And then a second, a, a second event is supposed to happen too, that's like an anti-communist, it's like a March Against Marxism and an anti-communist rally. And it seemed like they were going to happen like right around the same time, which I thought would have been really cool. It would have been another weekend like that, like the one when we went and met Antifa at Chrissy Field. And we were shrooming and just trolling. And uh, that was fun. And then the next day we got to go to, got to, go to Berkeley for, for the Berkeley rally. And then after the Berkeley rally was over, we went back to San Francisco and had more fun. And then ran into some Antifa members in at um, Hippie Hill 
who recognized us and then and ran us out of the park and told us we weren't allowed to hang out and have fun like everybody else because we were fascists. That would have been fun. Another weekend just like that. What that, been? that would have been really cool. And I would like these two events to be right next to each other, but I don't, I don't know, we'll see. We should see. do shrooms. Hmm? <laughs> we should do shrooms again. So you sure. want to do it again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do want to do it again. As long as people aren't getting hurt, and I believe that, that you know, the police are going to make sure that, you know, fights don't break out. Then I'm I'm fine with that. I don't I don't mind that at all. I love having fun. I love trolling. So long as I feel like, you know, we're winning or maybe not win winning, but just safe. As long as I know that we're safe and that the cops are going to protect us and they're not going to let fights break out, then oh yeah, I will troll. I will troll and I will just laugh my ass off and have a good freaking time. But if I don't think that that's going to happen, if they're just going to let it be a blood fest, a slug fest, then I'm not. I don't want to. I don't want to have like a bad Bruce trip. Berkeley. I don't want to have a bad trip, and I don't also don't want to get super drunk too. I don't want to be drunk getting my ass kicked. Yeah, like the first Berkeley. Yeah, I don't need any of that. How about you? Well, yeah, I'd rather it be safe than be sorry. And I would prefer being under the influence of some type, but <laughs> if that means putting myself at risk. You know, because I don't want to be under the influence and be yeah. defenseless. That's no way to go. As much as they, they so far, no one has ever been able to tell when you're undercover, when you're in there as Antifa. Yeah, but nobody can. Nobody knows who's who. Nobody knows who's who. That could be a good thing and a bad thing. It's kind of weird because when I was under, when I was with, when I was you know undercover, people were looking at me, but I couldn't tell because. Like, they they wanted to, they wanted to, like, talk with me, or they just didn't know who I was. But, you know, once you put on that mask, no way knows, the, you, you are, you are a blank slate. You're a blank slate. That's, that's the whole tactic behind it. That's, it's, it's meant to be that way. There's, they're supposed to be unidentifiable. So it, it doesn't work in their favor in such a way that anybody can infiltrate their, their that's group. But at the same time, it really helps them get away with shit that they shouldn't be doing. As long as they're not making any arrests and they just want to let these guys march around and do whatever the hell, whatever the hell they want to do, then I don't... Well, shit, and do your thing, dude. <laughs> I mean, yeah, just like you said, it's, it's chaos. It can get to chaos, and they... they the law... Enforcement shouldn't hesitate to take action when necessary. And I feel like that's the case when it comes to people being assaulted and whatnot. Especially with Jean when she got assaulted. They're yeah. You know, my friend got house arrest because he attacked a, a guy who was assaulting a woman. And. Really? And uh, his friends all scrambled, and he went with a couple of his friends, and he hit the guy with the skateboard, and uh, the cops caught up to him, and, you know, he, he explained to the cop what happened, and the cop was just like, well, this is what I think, and, you know. Of course. I think this happened. Well, it looks, yeah, see, you... They'll always they'll always use that excuse that guilty people don't run or whatever or guilty people have nothing to hide. They'll always use that, and especially if you give them the police an opportunity to use that. And if you run away, you're definitely leaving a wide open door for them to use that excuse to stop you. If you were if you weren't guilty, you wouldn't have anything to hide. Never give the police a reason to use that. I I, I back the blue, but just just because they have a badge doesn't mean that they're not human. Okay. Yeah, like honestly. I've had things that... Uh, what did you just say about guilty people or innocent people don't have anything to hide? Dick of the I police have, I have use that. a ton of things to hide, and the best way to do it is by hiding in plain sight. And um, the way to do that is by being cool. Is by, you know, you know, you didn't do anything, 
and if you're not going to do anything, you have nothing to hide. Yeah. Even if you have, even if you have a pocket filled with the most illegal drugs, you can elicit. Um, you know, as long as you're cool, and you don't got anything to worry about. But you know, these people dressing up like burglars and terrorists. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> the fucking hamburger burglars. Dressing like hamburglers, go running around, They're walking up and down the streets like. They own. They run the town. The only thing they have to hide is their weapons and their own fucking dignity. Yeah, I've seen. You see the videos where they st they have something. It looks like a club or something, but they have it like wrapped in a in a cloth. Yeah. So you can't really see what was in there. And they did this to one of their own people, a Bernie Sanders supporter, who decided to march with an American flag. Some of you may have seen this. They they started hitting him in the leg with it, and it wasn't doing anything. And then you see the guy, he kind of, you know, he's hitting him in the leg, and he looks around, and then he takes it, and he whacks the guy one time in the head. Cracks the skull. As soon as he, it was just, he, yeah, just one hit. Whatever was on that bat wasn't doing anything to his baggy pants, but as soon as it made contact with his hard skull, he said he felt like his bones turned to jello, he hit the ground, and just saw blood coming out of his head. And another story I saw, another video of Bernie supporters all mobbing and fighting each other before they realized that they were all Bernie supporters. Did you see that one? I think I actually posted it on, on my Facebook page. What happened? It's a mob of Bernie supporters. I don't know what happened, what caused the fight to start, but they all just started wailing on each other, fighting. But then they realized that they were all Bernie supporters. Like, they, I don't know, they thought that there was a Trump supporter amongst them or something. You didn't see that? I think it's on my Facebook page. Well, we just need to get one thing out of the way. What's that? Bernie supporters are stupid. <laughs> Glad we got that out of the way. I still have some Bernie supporter friends. <laughs> well, for the least part. There's a select... There's a, there's a certain category of people that you see them and you just know they're Bert, Bert B supporters. Mm -hmm. You know, those, there's those high schoolers that didn't really get anywhere in high school and they want free college. Yep. Their education can't give them their scholarships. Yep. Your parents are rich, but your grades sucked, but you still have enough money to get somewhere. Yeah. People who... Well, yeah, you got the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also speaking of Bernie, did you see the uh, his his uh, campaign was demanding that they give him the hourly wage that he's ex that they were that he's talking about that if he becomes president he's going to give people a fifteen dollar an hour minimum wage, fifteen fucking dollars. I remember when not that long ago it seemed like you'd have to be doing something very serious to get fifteen dollars an hour. He was giving them all thirteen dollars an hour. He gave them, he gave their, his, his employees $15 an hour, but then had to cut their hours. There go, there you go. These people, these people don't get it. Sounds like they're idiots. Then inflation will come, come around, you know. Assume $15 won't even get you lunch. <coughs> Damn. Oops. Turn all red. Uh. Oh my god. Did you already got that chicken on camera? Not yet. <clears throat> uh. Gotta cool down a little bit. Oh. Damn summer, I cannot wait for the winter. Speaking of Antifa. <clears throat> what was it up there? Did you see this this discussion about this guy? Okay, uh, can you like briefly like you recognize put, him? You briefly put like an image on screen. Yeah, that guy. That 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 guy. <clears throat> All right, what about him? Um, apparently he's Antifa. I mean, I always thought that he was maybe somewhat of a leftist, but I thought he was like, he was cool, and he was honest, and he was like more down to earth, like an, a down to earth leftist. But he, um, 
So I would see this guy <clears throat> very often when I would go to Amber's rallies. All I noticed was that he would dress kind of punk rockish, but I never saw anything about him that was, um, that was, that stood out as patriotic. But at the same time, I know that he was kind of doing what I do. Like, I wear very little, little to no patriotic gear. You know, I have like a, maybe a little, little American flag right here, and maybe my Kekistan flag up here. That's it. Sometimes, not even that. <clears throat> On one hand, it's one way to stay out of, the j out of jail if they were making arrests. On the other hand, <clears throat> I've always felt that once you start getting involved like that, you have to keep getting involved in, like that. And plus, you make yourself a target. No one's ever hit well. That's not true, okay? I have been hit. <clears throat> but I haven't been in any, any actual fights or anything. And I, I put part of that blame on me just not trying to find somebody and engage in fights with them, you know? No one will find any footage of me fist fighting somebody. And even when I went to go press charges against Yvette Falarka, the police asked me, he's like, we're not going to find any footage of you hitting anybody, are you? Because if we do, it's not going to look good on you. And I said, I would love to see it. If you can find some footage of me fighting somebody or hitting somebody, show me. <clears throat> Still to this day, that hasn't happened. Well, what happened to Falarka? She ended up paying, for, for paying the price or what? Follow, <clears throat> he, she did when she um, when she finally kicked someone else and she kicked Kyle Chapman but you guys know about that already <clears throat> follow Justin Trouble and his channel he follows her court case and he's always making updates on what's going on with her and what charges she's facing <clears throat> I would definitely like to see her you know, get the freaking hammer someone lay the law down on her but but yeah, so you remember when we went, when we went to um, Amber's uh, Christmas toy drive. It was like a March Against Marxism Christmas toy drive, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I remember that. He was there. He was there. Wasn't. Uh, Pretty sure he was there. Jeff there. Jeff wasn't there. No. no this was, was like this was like not is this. The uh, one where we went to it was like Christmas themed, and then or was that before? It was in kind of San Francisco. It was in Berkeley. It was at Berkeley at the at Martin Luther King. It was at Martin Luther King Park. Like up somewhere north of here. I don't know. Well, they're all north of here. <clears throat> was it during Christmas time? It was in December. You remember that time? The last time we saw Jeff, he was like sitting there with his friends. You, we approached him, and then he just brushed us off with like, um, I don't have anything else to say to you. Yeah. I yeah I walked up to him and I just asked him I said oh yeah just, I, I did this the same thing I did this to my boss once too my boss actually said to me over the phone once that he was going to kick my ass and when I went into work on Monday he, he tried to scare me off into not coming to work so I went in on Monday and I he, he came in to check on me I um I said to him so uh, you're going to kick my ass and he's like don't start it's a new year but um, <clears throat> yeah, I did. I pretty much did the same thing with Jeff. I don't really like talking. I don't want to talk because uh, what's it's, what's over is over, and so I shouldn't even be saying things. But but yeah, I you know I walked up to him and I just say, hey Jeff, you gonna kick my ass? <laughs> yeah, uh, but yeah, I don't. Mean, he said something about you. You're gonna really say that to me in front of these gentlemen, and then one of them said something to me, but. And he says one of them said something about me. Did I, did I did I do something to deserve it? But I wasn't I wasn't focused on him at all. I just I just looked and I looked back and I just kept my focus on Jeff and, and I was just like okay well whatever happens happens and I'll, I'll hope you everything stays cool and, and I hope you enjoy the event. So I'll see you around. And I think I offered him my hand and we shook and then and then that was <clears throat> that was that. But yeah, like that was I mean we're talking about two years ago now at least. Uh, well, it definitely wasn't this recent Christmas. <clears throat> that that was that was um, Kate March Justice for Kate March. <clears throat> Funny though. What a what a time. What, what a time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like I don't like talking about anybody specifically, uh, especially not negatively. In order for me to get for for you to in, in order for you to get me to mention you in a video in a negative way or in any any manner to to mention you negatively, you really really have to go out of your way to do me harm or screw me over. Like who? 
I don't want to keep talking about it. Right? <laughs> but yeah, you know, the, 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 this particular person did go out way, way out of their way to, to, do, to do something, and that's the only reason why I, I've ever mentioned it. But this video isn't about isn't about that. <clears throat> what's what's you know, it's bygones, bygones are bygones. The so I see this guy at uh, Amber's rally a lot. <clears throat> And <clears throat> the other day he came to a rally again. He was at the event that I uploaded recently, the Family Faith and Freedom Rally in Sacramento by by Jeffrey. <clears throat> yeah, a lot of us knew who he was. Some of us didn't know who he was. Some of us had no clue who he was and just kind of said stuff. And not a lot of people did a very good word putting the word out that he was a leftist. Not only that he was not just a leftist, he was straight up Antifa. And that he was reporting everything that we were saying, everything that we were doing. And at this time, at, le at least to me, it seemed to me, this time, he really took an extra step to twist things that we were saying and dox people. And my friend Angela now is really upset, shouldn't be upset at someone wasn't really his fault, and he shouldn't be saying anything either. Should just let it go. <laughs> we should have tried a little bit harder to just let people know. My opinion of him was that, look, he's a nice guy, but be careful what you say to him, because he's putting it up on some Antifa website, and they're using that information. And I also found out, I mean, I should have known, of course, I'm sure he's not the only one. He's getting a lot of stuff from me and from the stuff that I post. I don't really know exactly what I post that could be bad because I'm not really reporting anything that's not true. I'm just, you know, I'm just filming what's happening and showing you what's happening. But I don't know, I'm, I'm, I must be posting something that is of some value to him. And, uh... He quoted me directly on his Twitter account, saying that he goes to my YouTube channel and gets videos off of my YouTube and uses them. And he also gets uh, videos from Jeffrey and uses them. So when you see this guy, I don't know what you want to do. My only recommendation is if there's anything you do, just be very careful of what you say to him. Because remember, he's reporting it, he's posting it, and at this point, as far as I'm concerned, he's twisting it just like any other fake news organization. And I, I'm really surprised that I was actually this close to calling this guy friend until this last event. No joke. He seemed like a really nice guy. And not just like pretending to be friendly. I don't know. I felt like... Maybe it's just me. I'm a sucker. I guess I put a little extra effort into befriending people who I feel like I have things in common with. So I put a little extra effort into trying to get, get, get along with him just because I see that he's documenting these things like I'm documenting these things. I put a little extra effort into getting along with Johnny. Little because I you know. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, same, th same reason. Yeah, I'm starting to realize that not everybody sees things the way I do. <laughs> <clears throat> Just now realizing this, oh, things nobody sees things exactly the way I do. I should go on a shooting spree. <laughs> Kidding. Kidding. The next but, thing you're gonna see is that little instant little clip on Antifa website. Yeah. So you know, you know, remember Andy? The did you see the Andy guy? The, the Asian I mean, guy who got beat the fuck up by An Antifa. Antifa will do that to a journalist who's not reporting on them the right the way they want them to report on them. I just want that to soak in and resonate and they gave him brain damage and brain bleeding so this guy he's Antifa he's a journalist that guy's a journalist he's Antifa look what Antifa did to that journalist and if this journalist is amongst us. 
Keep going. He comes around us while these people, while Antifa puts up posters everywhere saying that we're violent and that we mob the streets like they're doing here in this video and we beat up minorities like they're doing here in this video. And now one of them is amongst us. And we're not beating the shit out of him and making his brain bleed. So what are you gonna say to this guy if you see him? If you see him, spit on him. Um, that's assault. We don't do that. I'm gonna. Despite the lies they say about us, we don't assault people. I mean, <laughs> I didn't say that. I said I'm gonna sit on it. I'm gonna think of, I'm gonna assess the situation, and I will handle it appropriately. Okay. <laughs> I will assess the situation, and I will handle it appropriately. <laughs> Fucking Abner. Uh, so now I got some other information on Kyle Chapman. Hmm. Uh, don't think you're going to be seeing much of him. What is that? Someone told me... I, I was like, I, I, I don't know why. This is just for those who are curious, if you if you want to know whether or not the guy's still in the game. Um, when I was at the, the GOP convention, someone told me that he was going to be starting to come around more often, and we were going to have our old bodyguard back. But then another person's telling me, that he's he's just done with it all. Uh, I also heard from the same person. I shouldn't be keep saying like I heard this, and I don't know. I don't know how to report this kind of stuff. <laughs> but I guess Kyle Chapman actually had this guy at his house. That's all I'm going to say about that. The Robert Mueller report. Uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. I I don't go ahead. I, I just heard it was a disaster for, for Mueller and for the for the Democrats and that Trump is again for the fourth time not being impe impeached you know third time's a charm fourth time's a charm tenth time's a charm who gives a fuck keep, keep going just keep going you'll get him you'll get him you'll, you'll get him I'm sure you'll get him it's basically him reading the report yeah yeah yeah, I didn't watch it. Oh, I was pretty dumb. You watched it, huh? Well, I was in the car ride to Vallejo, and they're they're playing that shit on the radio. Okay. So I was listening to that, and um, yeah. Apparently, there's like entertaining at all. Kind of entertaining. They they were talking about this one guy. Mike Papadopoulos, which is like the guy who started all of this Russian collusion and stuff nonsense in the first place, and uh, and they went question him, but they didn't arrest him or did anything, and they just want to know why, and they're just like, oh, I'm not at liberty to say why, <laughs> and every time they ask him something, he just feel like. I refer you to the, to the report itself, and you answered like that like ten times in a row. Yeah, I refer like, you to the report itself. Wow, that sounds actually pretty boring. Abner's friends with Ashton. Yep, he's a UC Berkeley student. Oh, okay. People at Berkeley are fucking crazy, man. Well, yeah, tell me about it. They'll fucking hunt you down, though. They'll rate a Reddit article about you on the internet, and then when you type in your name to Google, the first thing you find is that Reddit article where that guy wrote about you and, like, talked a whole bunch of shit about that one day. Uh, really? Yeah. It's fucked, it's fucked up, man. Which guy? It's 
see. You're not even listening. Yeah, tell me again. <laughs> me? <laughs> Must have been me. I wrote up a bunch of shit. I must have missed something. What's up with your outfit? You got an outfit for the March Against Marxism? I'd probably wear something nice, slick. Armor? I don't know. Um, depends on whose side I'm going on. It's easier to be on your guys' side because you don't have the police shooting things at you. Right. I was on their side, and when they were marching, one rope was just blocked off, and there were a bunch of police with, like, sh with weapons pointed at us. Really? Yeah, and they just opened fire, and, and <laughs> everyone was just, like, calling us in the opposite direction. We all just turned around and just booked it. Wow. And it wasn't, like, lethal weapons. It was, like... Something smoke grenades, flash grenades. Something sm smoky. It, 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 it made like a trail of smoke. And uh, fucking, there was like a parking garage, and I just turned left and or, uh, turned around and went there. Wow. What'd you do from there? From there, we went, I don't know, we, we ended up in this park. Way down there. It was like, I don't know, a bunch of people. This is a big park, you know. Nothing special about it. I don't, I don't, I don't remember the area. But yeah, they had like the, their own little speeches where, I mean, they didn't have anything set up or anything. It was just like story time, the playground type of speeches. But, uh, yeah. Hmm. There's a bunch like of people. Drag queen story time? Yeah, like everyone was crisscross applesauce. Wow. The people it's who like are... a bunch of kids. That's funny. Really? Did you join them? Sit down sit down and crisscross applesauce with them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, story time. <laughs> what was the stories? What did they tell? Like stories from Mark? <laughs> Some stuff like, oh, we're going to take down, we're going to... We're gonna rise and we're gonna do this, all this stuff, and Trump will go down and stuff like that, you know? The, the generic Antifa garbage you, you can. <laughs> you know. Really? You were on the inside and you just heard the same old shit you hear on the outside? <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are what they are. <laughs> Not much happening there. They're, they're pretty clean cut and dry. <laughs> Fucking crazy, dude. Because, like, one second you're, like, dodging bullets, and the next moment you're sitting down with, like, a family and their kids wearing a mask. And... <laughs> wow. Everyone's just chilling there. Like, they have, like, fucking bats and, like, paintball guns and all this stuff, and everyone's just sitting down and crisscross applesauce. How bizarre. Fake an accent. It was pretty easy. You had to fake an accent. I, mean, I chose to. Oh. But you know, it, it was all worth it, dude. When I was walk, when we were marching, we had the whole fucking street. It was a really big street too, and like the front platoon, that it was like a bunch of armed men, like in just black raid outfits. You know. Yeah. And I, I don't know what kind of guns they had because they definitely had guns. And they were just fucking walking up and then they were just fucking lined up in front. And I guess those who are who they started aiming at the police. With what? They were like you know how Antifa dresses. Yeah. But imagine Antifa, but like Black Ops Antifa. Uh huh. Fucking, that's the type of, there's like a splatoon of them up in the front, and, up in the front, the front lines, you know? Uh-huh. And they had like armor and guns and like sticks and all that stuff. And, and they aimed them at the cops? And then behind them, they had like, uh, they had the black block thing 
Mm-hmm. So they kind of had like a wall. They had like their own little barrier between the people armed and the people that were just supporting them. They were moving like in platoons, of, like fucking thirty platoons. That's how I say it, because there's fucking they're, they're, there's yeah, some numbers. And they have numbers when when you're up in their territory, you know. Yeah. You're, you're not gonna see this shit up in like Texas or anything. Interesting. But you know the. You know, the closer you get to, to San Francisco, <laughs> the you know the more you're gonna see this shit. They're really trying to figure something out. It's very interesting. Like they don't know. They think there's something there that that isn't there, and they're putting all this effort into trying to outthink us. But they're never gonna realize that that they're overthinking the whole thing. They'll never see that the half of this crap is all just in their head. I mean, maybe someday when they're old, if they make it to their being old, they'll realize that, man, I fucked up. What was I doing? It was nothing. Because things, I mean, things eventually will be back to normal. Eventually, this all this, this Antifa and this protests and all this craziness, this... It'll all go away, and they'll be back like it'll be like two thousand. It'll be like two thousand seven again. Yeah, I feel it. This has to blow over eventually. Yeah, and the ones, the ones of them that will be left, will say. No one will be paying attention to them anymore. Yeah, no one will be paying attention to them, and hopefully, someone will realize. Like, man, I think I was. I I think I might have been freaking out a little bit. I think I might have lost my cool a little bit. And those of us on the on the side who fought against it will be well stood up to it. We'll will be proud that they did. And the spectators, everyone not involved who just watched all this shit go down. Well, I can't wait to hear what they have to say when all this blows over. I'm just gonna feel bad for the victims of it. You it's know, too, they, yeah. You know, the guy that got hit in the head. And like, I was just they, thinking of that too. The old man that tried to help the guy in Portland. You know, like imagine him down the line. You know, what is he gonna have to think about it? The past. Remember that fucking when we were at the battle for Berkeley, the first one that I went with you. Yeah. They're in the streets pushing a dumpster back and forth. Yeah. There, yeah, I remember that. Like, what's their, what's their plan with the garbage can? What's like, what's, what's gonna happen with that? It just kept getting pushed back and forth. I guess the idea was what was that if if one let the other side have it, they were gonna try and rush it into the other crowd or something. So they just kept playing a push of war with the art with the garbage can dumpster. <laughs> hey, hey, be careful! There's some someone's babies in there. Good God. Uh, the madness. I can't believe someone got stabbed at that one. You're really talking about? You don't remember seeing that? It was when we met up in the in the downtown, and you were like trying to get traffic to, like you were just trying to encourage traffic to go right through them and plow them. The yeah, um, shit. Right, did someone got stabbed there. Yeah, it was like right after that. Hey, fuck. I remember turning and looking and seeing the cops taking him away, and he had his shirt pulled up and he had like a little cut about a little, little cut about the size of a blade, like like right in his lower back, upper back. Damn, that could have killed side. him. Yeah, I was like kind of, it was kind of off to the side, but yeah, yeah, it could have. Mm. If he, you know, could have lost a kidney maybe. <laughs> but good thing it didn't happen to me, because, yeah. There was so much blood at those early rallies, and I, I was, yeah, I was like, damn. Um, my thing's empty. Yeah, mine is too. Well, I don't know, I guess that's, I guess that's the end of the video. But I want to wrap up by saying, like, I saw the blood die down, and now it's ramping back up. 
You know, the closer we get to elections, the crazier it's gonna be. It's getting crazy fast. It's getting bloody fast. You know, it's not like at post-election where like, remember how like after we, or before Trump was elected, it was all crazy, and then after it was like, you know, not as bad, but still bad. Yeah. Start, it's starting to get bad again, but this time worse, maybe. Before, because it's happening before the election, they're already ready. You know, now they got the, the illegals on their side. Pretty sure. I don't know. This is illegals. Not all illegals. Not the illegals I know. Oh. Not all of the ones that I know. Yeah, it is. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens and where this all goes and what takes place. It's going to be a losing battle for them. Yeah, there's no way they're going to win because we're fighting for our country. And if some of these illegals could imagine it, I don't know if they could because they're sitting in our country where they should be at home. Imagine if you were at your country. What would you do for your country? Probably not much because you're here illegally. But, I don't know. If you can't love our country, then leave our country. Hey, Steve. You got the same type of car I got. should, like, invest in the same type of car I have, because, like, I'm trying to get, like, a horde of them. A herd. Uh, you know, like, I'm trying to get a, like a, my own posse in a herd of Mustangs. Um, yeah, no. <coughs> Let's finish this. <coughs> I want to start my own little fucking group of people with those vehicles and they have, like, meetups. Okay. I'm wasting memory card, I'm wasting battery. Alright, the end. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Please leave your comments in the comment section below. I want to hear from you guys. And I want to know some details of what you think of these guys. <laughs> More Antifa parties ahead. I'll see you.